Hey everyone, it's Alain and Mood from Turbulence, and you're now listening to the broadcast. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the podcast. Uh, today, um, I have a call from Lebanon from two super talented guys. That's Mode and Alain from Turbulence, the guitar player and the keyboard player. And Turbulence have their second album coming up in less than a month. Uh, Frontal will released uh, will be released on March. 12th through frontal uh for frontiers music, <laughs> frontal music. <laughs> yeah. and uh yeah it's the band's second album but yeah still i think uh, a lot of people uh, in the in the prog scene will uh discover you with this album uh -huh. so i think you, maybe you can start introducing your band how you got together <laughs> okay, so uh, it goes back to, I think, 2012. That's when Mood and I, we already knew that we we kind of were into, we both were into prog music. And it was at that time that neither of us had any project going on. So we kind of started talking over Facebook and he like sent me a little riff that he had written which is now the track called Richardson's Nightmare from our first album, The Equilibrium. And that's actually how everything started, you know, we kind of were like just having fun back and forth. And we realized that this can go somewhere, you know. And we talked about it. We came up with the name, I think it was less than a week after we, we had gotten together. And that's how Turbine started, yeah. Yep. So, yeah, you just mentioned your first album, Disequilibrium. Uh, you released that in 2015, so a little bit more than five years ago. Yep. Yeah. Um, and you did you release it independently? Yes, we did. So now that's, that's also a, a big step and, and uh, um, it's going to be different with the second album now that you have the support of a quite big label in the, pr in the rock world rock and metal world with with frontiers from italy definitely um yeah, yeah. let's yeah. let's dive into let's dive into frontal uh -huh. your second album that's about to be released let's um, do that. <laughs> <laughs> how, how how can we uh imagine uh uh, or picture the composing and recording process for Turbulence and for Frontal in particular? Get this one. <laughs> Me? <Yeah>. Great. <laughs> uh, well, it didn't actually have to like be that hard. We knew already we, we got together earlier, like in 2013, to write. So we are getting used to the writing process. Uh, but the really interesting thing on this writing or like producing this album is that we have really new ideas, a very fresh uh, start, like different than this equilibrium. And we kept like throwing ideas on the table. Uh, I remember that we had a lot of things written before Alan got like written many, many riffs before and we and kind of like mix them all together uh, on this record. And I think like uh, we don't need to like, uh, like we didn't have to like spend a lot of time putting effort or like making a lot of effort to create. We more like concerned about how it's going to sound like produced. Like, we had a lot of good ideas and we, I still, I think it's one of the greatest ideas we did the turbulence history of writing yeah i agree with that yeah so when when you come so you the two of you are the main composers right yep <laughs> true and uh so when you do you uh, send your ideas back and forth through the internet or do you meet up how far are you living from each other <laughs> 
So it's a, it's a mixture of both, I think. Uh, sometimes, you know, a, an idea hits you at the most, at the weirdest times, you know, and like we get, uh, I, I send him an audio note telling him, why don't we do this and that? And he will he would build on that idea, you know, he'd send me like a piano part of it or a synth part of it. And we'd start building and uh, like brainstorming back and forth. And then we'd get together and put, start recording a demo that we can actually sit down with the band and listen to what they feel about it. And uh, that's where Omar, our vocalist, can start laying out ideas so that we can imagine how that would sound on the record and if it fits the the general vision that we'd had for it. Yeah. So that's kind of... So did, did, you, did you go into a studio or did you um, record everything in your... Home studios. I mean, nowadays with with the uh, with the um, with the technical abilities that are available, uh, I think almost everyone could, you know, <laughs> record Definitely, something yeah. prop, proper, decently sounding at home. So, so how did you go about for the recording process? Yeah, that's so true. So for the demos, we did record everything uh, from our homes, uh, especially that when you have instruments that you record you don't need a live room for it like the keyboards and nowadays the guitars with all the plugins that are available like you said uh, you, you can almost uh, it, it can almost uh, provide the same result as going into a, a live room and mi uh, miking your amp or whatever so uh, the demos uh, were built like that and we only hit the studio when we needed to actually record final takes for the album like for the drums and for the vocals for acoustic guitars yeah, and stuff like that. That was uh, towards the end more. Mm -hmm. And um, at what point did uh, did the Frontiers music uh, come into the picture? Did you send them the the finished album, or did you send them like a earlier stage of demos? So we wanted to make sure that we presented that the best that we can. Like, not the best that we can. We wanted to uh, convey our vision to the best of our ability. So we decided to send Frontiers the full mastered album. You know, that, this is what we sound like. We need to distribute this to the world. Are you interested? It was that kind of thing, you know? Yeah. So, so that, <laughs> that's, uh, that was a year ago, like exactly a year ago. And uh, yeah, the ma you just mentioned the master and that was done by Lucas De La Rosa, who we also had yeah. on, on the broadcast. Um, very talented guy. A about a year ago, I think. <laughs> and yeah, uh, that's so true. I think it's in summer. What you mean? Um, I, 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 we, we had so many, so many broadcast episodes since then. Yeah. So th I, I can't really remember <laughs> myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, l let's talk about the music first. Um, we we have we have talked about how you guys met and and how you uh, recorded uh, the album, Frontal. But we haven't actually talked about what it sounds like. And um, w one thing that you mentioned that I wanted to to stress also, having listened to both Dis Equilibrium and now uh, Frontal a couple of times. Uh, the, it, it is quite quite apparent that you you kind of came into your own shoes with this album. The this equilibrium w w was still more you, you, the the influences were a little bit more obvious, I think, and 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 now you're finding your your own voice with with the band with Turbulence. I had the feeling uh, while listening to uh, Frontal, and also I was I was a little bit surprised, but um, that's not. Um, necessarily bad thing that it was a little bit of a grower <laughs> I, I was I, I was expecting a little bit more immediacy <laughs> um, but uh, fair enough it, it it did work out in the end I, I just uh, yeah I gave it a couple of spins and with every spin I there, there's more stuff that's sticking and and that I want to go back to and listen again you know um, so where where do you yeah. guys see your musical roots? <laughs> nice. I think like uh, uh, when we did this equilibrium, it was really like fresh to us to write uh, uh, together first, and uh, even though like quite proper prog music album, uh, 
we decided to put all like I actually didn't decide it. It came naturally putting all our musical influences like in one uh, musical piece. So like <laughs> there's inspiration like Dream Theater and Symphony X and Opeth. Uh, we like to like combine them together and make something uh, like that would eventually like sound our thing like it's gonna be our thing but you know how it turns out even if it sounds like uh, like dream theater or it sounds like symphonix or any other band it's still kind of be like this creation that inspires you to continue and make more music so when we met for frontal we had this fresh idea as i said to like introduce new stuff uh even with more technicality and even with more like sound better sound and the modern one and not like not just like this equilibrium <laughs> so yeah that's how i see it <laughs> that's how i, I, see I it. would like so, to add something to that that kind of you know you, you just mentioned that there there's like five to six, six years between the two albums so imagine the the amount of confidence and experience that we had gained and that does allow us to experiment more often and i think that's how a band really finds their sound you know they ha that's how they find their sound you need to experiment and and fine tune it until you can sound exactly like in in your head you know yeah Al alain you just you just mentioned the the experience that you you gained over these years um since the disequilibrium during that time, you also kind of found success as as a guitar player on with your YouTube channel on your own, so to speak, and and had like some some really successful videos going viral and and uh, yeah. Uh, so was there a point where where you where you had the feeling that this uh, YouTube channel was kind of uh, taking away your 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 um, not focus, but but you, you you did you ever feel like a pressure from like okay I need to put out a new YouTube video and now I have to leave the turbulent stuff for a moment or <laughs> sorry about <laughs> that. that that's a really good question Step actually <laughs> uh, the thing is uh, my uh, my YouTube channel started taking off after we had already. Uh, done the recording process and part of the production process for Frontal. So a big part of my responsibilities towards this album and towards the band were kind of already taken care of. Now, as my channel started growing, of course, there's the pressure that grows with it. You know, you feel like more people are expecting something right now. And to some extent, it does give you inspiration because I think every musician just wants to feel that connection. Like you're putting out your music and it's gonna be heard your voice is gonna be heard so and like you said along with that comes a lot of pressure but uh i think it's just a matter of what i'm feeling in the moment it never is like pre-planned like i need to do a youtube video right now maybe it needs to be but right now it's just i'm going with the flow you know uh if i feel like i'm i need i want to work on something for turbulence that's what i'm that's what i would be doing and so on cool that's yeah. Uh, yeah so, so, sounds sounds good. <laughs> um, <laughs> let, let's talk a little bit about the lyrical content because I think uh, both Disequilibrium and Frontal also are kind of concept albums. Am I right about that? Um, that's what we like to think. Kind of. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they are concept album. They are like we we have a story in mind. We have like scenes going on in our minds as we write every section of every note and every lyric. But I wouldn't say like it's a story that's uh, chronologically moving forward. It's more like there's definitely one theme. More, more, more like scenes from a memory or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can't, <laughs> can't see what we did from there. The <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so who, who is responsible for the lyrics in the band? Is, is it something that you, you, do you collaborate also, like with the music? Or um, is your singer, Omar, uh, taking care of that? Uh, no, it's actually me. I am the one who's, uh, who wrote the lyrics. Uh, I believe in, like, it's just because I was the one who had uh, the 
the clearest vision of what this album would sound like. So that that uh, kind of surfaced with the lyrics as well. And I believe that it was so important to have one guy write the ideas. And of course, it would like pass through a filter with the other members, like make sure everything, uh, all the messages that we agreed, we wanted to convey that, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd see if it's it was there. I'd get their approval and see how the general feel if they were okay. And of course, like the biggest judge for that would be the vocalist. He has to, he has to say these words. He has to convince the listener of them. Yeah, to, to, to feel his input was there too and his input was like valid yeah. for sure and the recording process even when we put the words uh, together and with the music it was clear that like he would give his input for sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, I mean he, he, he has to as you said he has to, to speak or sing these words even and uh, has to be convincing and, and it has to have that flow when he sings and, and with the phrases and stuff. Um, yeah. yeah, you guys uh, put out two singles. Actually, the second single just dropped today as we're recording this. Um, that was Ignite, the lyrics video. The first single was yeah. Madness Unforeseen, and you, you that, that had a little bit uh, of a more elaborate video. Um, That's true. Can, can you tell us a little bit about that video, how, how you um, made that? Yeah, you mean madness or ignite? Ma madness, madness unforeseen. Oh, okay, actually, it's, it's really funny. Actually, we decided to. Uh, we didn't actually planning to to like having this single to be the single of the album at first, but eventually you had to make like the thought of having a single uh, in, in your album, and we choose madness because it's damn straight balls <laughs> and have this like a lot of riffing and there's a uh, dubstep part electronic feel and there's a lot happening in, uh, in this song as though it's not that long uh, but it, but it is perfect for a music video you know like uh, make a hit out of it uh, that music video were actually done in a uh, place uh, like used to be a uh, uh, well, wood factory or something like this, and uh, we put a good space out. We got the director, and we managed to have like this space where we're all comfortable in. We are all, and uh, I don't think I have much to say on that. Can you continue, Alan? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, so the idea of madness unforeseen. Uh, I'd, I'd have to relate to uh, to, the, to your previous question about the lyrical content a bit. So the album talks about Phineas Gage. He's the main character of the album. And uh, maybe some of uh, your listeners know about him. He was a construction worker. And one day he, there was an accident that drove an iron rod through his brain, through his frontal lobe. And that's how... That's why the album basically is called Frontal. That's where we took it from. So... Ah. Yeah, we adapted that story in a way that anyone can relate to it from the aspect of having a sudden event change your life, you know, and the effect that would have on you and your, the people around you and the people that care about you, especially knowing that this accident caused him, he survived that accident and he became a totally different person because of it. It changed his personality 100%. So... Uh, in the song Man is Unforeseen, it talks about a man, it, it just talks about depression in a, in a more general aspect. So, you know, I think a lot of people can relate to this. You don't have to like follow the story of Phineas Gage. But we are talking about him in a certain way. So um, we we wanted to portray that in a very raw and violent because that's how it really is. It's a really vicious monster that lives with you. As, as someone who has depression, I mean. So that's the idea of the video. That's where it comes from. Yeah, true. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I it was a motorcycle. <laughs> sounds, sounds like a motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> Mood sample, that sound we needed. 
<laughs> yeah, I think we're gonna do that. <laughs> I can cut the bit out and send it to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I have yeah, my but... mic already turned on. <laughs> um yeah, as as uh, I think Maud, you you just mentioned that uh, the first uh, single "Madness Unforeseen" was uh, kind of musically is one of the shorter songs on the album, and and also a little bit more immediate with a with a immediate hook line and stuff. Um, That's not the shortest. There's shorter, but one of yeah, the, one I mean, of like, the, kind of one of the shorter it. songs. Yeah. Yes, um, <laughs> "Ignite" the the second single, however. Um, that you yeah. just released today as we're recording this is a single edit. Uh, yeah, exactly. Because, yeah, most of the songs are, yeah, more of more than seven minutes long, longer than seven minutes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Frog. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, how, how do you... Um, yeah, cut down a song, an eight and a half minute song, to what is it, five, five, six minutes. Um, I, yeah. I always, I always think that must be hard for a composer because it's like, yeah, you have to kill some of your darlings, as you say, in, in writing. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so true. That's true. <laughs> well, I, uh, if you're talking about the night here. Uh, that like long song kind of with the, a lot of like good drifts and there's a lot of melodic uh, approaches uh, and even though there's, there's this break in the middle where it goes so like mellow and angelic and have this uh, very soothing feel uh, <laughs> eventually the single edit is like the cut where where the other half becomes more instrumental and have a lot of riffing and stuff that I think people would love to listen to uh, on this album. Especially after Ignite being released that way as a single edit, I think people would really, really enjoy the full version of this song when the album is released. Because of the, a lot, because of there's a lot of instrumental uh, sections adding to what's already been done. Yeah, like yeah. Mood said, uh, w what made it easier for us, because like you said, for a composer, it's so hard to like dissect and restructure something when yeah. it wasn't intended to be like that. But what makes it easier in this track in particular, like Mood said, because it becomes instrumental at the end and we didn't have to restructure it. We just took out the last two, three minutes of the song. So yeah. that came, made it kind of, that massaged it a bit. Mm-hmm. Cool. Will will there be a third single before the album drops? Because we, we still have like a l little bit less than a month to go until the release date, or will it be just the two? It will be just the two of uh, the yeah. ones we released. There will be a single that will be released on the day that the album releases. We have no money for another video. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we could afford. <laughs> <laughs> very relatable um yeah in in these in these times since we started this uh these skype uh, interviews uh, about a year ago of course it's always a little bit weird and um yeah fairly hypothetical to, to talk about possible live shows um now, looking a little bit into your um, history as a band, I think I've read somewhere that you you actually did some live shows before you actually released your d d debut album, right? Yes, that's true. Yes, and, true. And then uh, there were kind of Dream Theater tribute um, yes. shows. Yeah. Yeah. So we the idea was to bring the Dream Theater show to the Lebanese. Dream Theater fans, because it's very unlikely that Dream Theater would play in this country. So we kind of replicated what we liked about their show, and we played two, three-hour sets of Dream Theater of purely just Dream Theater songs. That was really fun. We really, like, like you say, we let it let it out, you know. 
<laughs> so yeah, that was really fun, and we kind of that's how we put ourselves ourselves on the map here in this uh, locally, let's say. So people would say, oh, there's a band that plays Dream Theater. Not many bands play Dream Theater here. So they give you their ears, sort of. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you about the, the, the scene in Lebanon. I mean, obviously, it's it's a bit of an odd place for prog metal to come out of. And yeah. um, especially here, in, in, of course, in the Western media, we don't hear a lot about your country. We, we and and even less about some obscure prog bands. So, is yeah. how is how is the scene looking in Lebanon? You have a bit of everything, I think. So we get like these trends from the Western uh, culture, I guess, if you want to call it that. Um, you have a bit of everything. Like you have prog fans, you have gent fans, you have extreme metal fans, but it's a small country, you know, it's already a small country. The population is around four or five million people, the whole country. And uh, so, yeah, that, that would explain why you wouldn't hear uh, at your place, like uh, about prog coming out from this country, but our passion is as big as yours, you know? So, so when 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 you guys uh, do a concert, did, actually, did did you you played your own stuff after after Disequilibrium came out as well? Did you do like concerts with your own music? Then uh, we did a couple of shows. We actually uh, played the the album in its entirety with a small orchestra that we put together. That's how we actually released the album, and we played a bit of local festivals throughout the years while we were writing frontal on the side so yeah i'd say we did like 10 to 15 shows so so um when when you guys play in lebanon somewhere i, I would i would imagine that i mean the the whole metal community comes together no matter if you're like maybe usually more into extreme or more into prog rock or whatever. I, I could imagine that, that there's there's a lot of uh, yeah people from the wider rock and metal scene that would go to a show like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, I think like people, if you want to compare, like if you want to compare the outer world of Lebanon to Lebanon, I mean like the whole world to Lebanon, <laughs> the the music scene here especially the metal scene is a bit focused on the harsh and the and the uh, more death metal thrash metal uh scene uh then prog Pe not a lot of people like love to listen to prog in this country but uh knowing that this is already the metal scene is small here so you can't like you can't like compare it to the other uh, prog uh, metal scene in the, in the other countries. Uh, and when we play uh, in Lebanon, our music and our shows, uh, the people of prog scene come watch us. Also, the people of thrash metal and death metal and all the metal genres come watch us too. And that's a really good thing. It's a great thing to have support from a lot of different audience. Uh, but we wish also to have a big prog <laughs> scene that could come and watch us, like not few. Yeah. Um, we all know the current situation in the world with the pandemic still going on, but uh, we just we just can hope that that there there will be an end to it eventually, and uh, I certainly hope that you guys will be able to uh, to come out of your home country and uh, play somewhere where there's a little bit uh, uh, sure. so, some more we'll prog that. fans <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah definitely. Definitely. We, we hope we hope so too and more importantly we are ready for it that's great yeah, like, to hear preparing for it yeah awesome uh yeah turbulence's second album frontal is out on march 12th through frontiers music as we said and before we end this interview as always, I would like you to ask you guys, what's in your Walkman? What have you been listening to lately? Is there anything you want to uh, recommend to your fans and to our listeners? <laughs> would you uh, start, Alan? Uh, actually, no, I want you to start. <laughs> because mine will be very quick. 
<laughs> okay. Oh, I have more than you now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm actually listening to these guys called Modern Polis. I'm yes. loving this. Yeah, I, I I love the record, and also I like not not recently, but I I'm listening again to Thank You Scientist. They're I they are a big inspiration for me right now. Two very very cool shout outs. Yeah. Two very very cool bands. Mm, yep. Thank you, Scientist. Um, I think their last album was from 2019, um, and More and Police as well. So yeah. maybe we'll we'll have some news from them as well. Uh, soon, More and Police uh, did release a new single last year, and they also um, had a very successful crowdfunding campaign um, with which they released their album. Uh, on vinyl and, and physically, um, yeah. which was very cool. Um, yeah. I also, I, ha I I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> the art awesome. the artwork is, is is really cool as well with the with the rhino it and is. stuff. Um, so yeah, yeah. very 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 cool um, uh, recommendations there. Um, yeah. Alan, what about you? Uh, so. For me, between making music like 90% of my time, between my other band, Ostura, and between Turbulence and YouTube, I don't tr I don't have like these musical endeavors and I, I'm not like discovering new bands every day. So my Walkman right now would look like Guthrie Govan mainly and Haken and <laughs> old Dream Theater stuff. And some like, you know, Stephen Wilson, stuff like that. Turbulence. <laughs> Turbulence. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. I have two uh, two entries into the What's in Your Walkman category uh, section as well. Today, um, one Greek band that I was kind of reminded of halfway through listening to Frontal. Uh, and they're called Until Rain. And they're... Um, last album was a little bit, um, yeah, I, I think they, they would definitely deserve a little bit more attention. It was uh, it's a fantastic album, very, very uh, dark and melancholic stuff from Greece. Fantastic band, mm -hmm. Until Rain. I'm going to put a song for them. I wrote them. that down. Okay. Um, yeah. Into the playlist. And also, because there is a song on Frontal called Faceless Man. I was reminded, of course, uh, of Slice the Cake, uh, who released <laughs> a live album live at home uh, at UK Tech Fest, online Tech Fest, more or less, um, last year with a song from their uh, album, um, uh, the big title track of the, of the Faceless Man. Uh, so, uh, and I just listened to it again today. So, yeah, that's uh, a little bit heavier than the other things we talked about today um, that will round <laughs> out the playlist <laughs> with, a, with a heavy 20-minute slab. Um, thank you so Thanks. much for taking the time, guys. Um, all the best thank for the release for with uh, Frontal. And yeah, I hope uh, we can meet each other on some festival or tour sure. maybe next year. I would, I would <laughs> assume... Um, <laughs> <laughs> <We hope. laughs> all right thank you guys for listening out there and uh, as always take care of yourselves take care of your loved ones and listen to great music yep. the Progcast is a production of Stuus Media and is presented by the Prague Space it is produced by Randy M. Salo Janine Stengel Lewis Blake Lewis and Dario Albrecht our theme music is by This Is Not An Elephant, and Van Kirsch does our graphics. New episodes of the podcast drop every Monday and Thursday. And don't miss our Friday Top 5 episode where we discuss our favorite new releases from that week. For more interviews and reviews in the written form, check out theprogspace.com. <laughs>